Hi, I'm Ryan Kruzinga. I'm entering my senior year at the University of Michigan as a math and computer science double major. This summer, I performed research with the Shore program guided by Professor Igor Markov. Broadly speaking, I investigated the application of inference techniques used by recommender systems to areas such as image processing and grade prediction. But what does all of that mean? A recommender system is a program that takes past user data and uses it to recommend new things to the user. A good example of this is Netflix. Have you ever noticed the Because You Watched or the Top Picks for You sections? Those are Netflix's recommender system at work. All of your past movie views and ratings and those of other Netflix users are entered into an algorithm which churns out movies that you might want to see. In 2006, Netflix issued the so-called Netflix Prize Challenge. Participants were asked to devise a recommendation algorithm to beat the existing algorithm's error score by 10%. This produced a vast body of literature on recommender systems, and it's where I began my research. My goal was to look into the algorithms devised in the Netflix Challenge and see if they could be applied to image reconstruction. Look at the following image. What is it? A bit hard to tell, perhaps. 70% of the original pixels were deleted. Let's reconstruct it using a technique from the Netflix Prize Challenge. That's better. Here's another fuzzy image. And here it is, reconstructed. These reconstructions were done using something called the Alternating Least Squares Algorithm. This involves a bit of linear algebra, but here's a 30-second description. There is a particular way of factoring matrices known as Singular Value Decomposition, or SVD. Any matrix whatsoever can be factored into three matrices with specific properties. For our purposes, two of the matrices can be rolled into one, yielding a two-matrix factorization. A theorem states that if we reduce the dimensionality of the data by shaving off some rows and columns of these matrices and then multiply them together, the result will be the best possible approximation of the original matrix from the lower dimension. So how does this relate to image processing? An image can be thought of as a matrix of pixels. What if some are missing? Well, we can try to estimate a lower dimensional singular value decomposition of the matrix and use that to approximate the original image. In the alternating least squares algorithm, this is done by randomly initializing one of the factors and then solving for the other one so as to minimize the least squared error between the product of the factors and the known entries of the original. Then we switch which factor we are solving for and repeat. I implemented the alternating least squares algorithm in MATLAB and tested it on a number of images. I investigated which choices of the algorithm's parameters, such as dimension and number of iterations, produced the best reconstructions. As it turns out, you can produce good reconstructions with low dimensions and only about 30 iterations, even when high percentages of pixels are missing. I also compared the technique to the most obvious method of image reconstruction, nearest neighbors, which is to simply average the values of nearby pixels. Averaging neighbors produces great-looking reconstructions, albeit ones that tend to be blurrier around the edges than SVD methods. My conclusion is that SVD by itself, although it works up to a point, is not the optimal method of rebuilding the image, but it might prove promising when combined with other methods. Such research is useful in machine vision. We can save hardware costs by only sampling necessary portions of an image and then reconstructing the whole as needed. More broadly, the techniques of recommender systems might be applied to, say, predicting the grade a student will get in a particular class. I learned a lot this summer. When it comes to sitting down and doing research, I learned what works and what doesn't, and got a feel for my own strengths as an academic, as well as the weaknesses that I need to work on. I'd like to thank Professor Igor Markov for giving me the opportunity to pursue research and for being my patient mentor throughout. I'd also like to thank my friend Michael Wiley for making this video possible.